Hello, this is Dr. Cecile Cosculuela. Welcome back to the second part of this video on the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA. The first part was about showing you how important it is to uh, master the basics of this uh, system of symbols for which one symbol represents one and only one phoneme. Um, and so we really need to master the basics of this tool in order to um, master English pronunciation. Um, the presentation here is going to follow in the footsteps of Henry Adamshevsky and Jean-Pierre Gabilon. Uh, basically, we're going to go over it through a series of examples and as usual I will ask you to be very active and try and guess what the phonetic transcriptions, what word they stand for. Okay, so here uh, it is the phonetic transcription of ship as opposed to sheep. Uh, so the vowel here, the phoneme that is followed by two dots is a tense vowel phoneme which means that it is pronounced with a tension whereas the one that doesn't have the two dots is a lax vowel phoneme so you may have the impression or you may have heard the, that this opposition is referred to in terms of long vowels and short vowels but that is actually really at the surface level because obviously you can pronounce a lax vowel when you're shouting in which case it's going to be really long and you can pronounce a tense vowel when you speak in real fast and in that case it's going to be short so basically the fundamental characteristics of characteristics sorry of um, tense vowel phonemes is that they're pronounced with a tension and this logic between tense and lax vowel phonemes we're going to find uh, throughout all the vowels in uh, English. Okay, so the next one is the word hat. So that's a lax vowel uh, that we will oppose to the one that we have in hot or heart. And you remember this symbol here separates the British pronunciation hot uh, with a central R that is never pronounced from the American pronunciation heart in which R's are always pronounced. The next word is the word caught or caught. Um, and well actually this sound here doesn't exist in American English where it's always more open. Um, uh, but this sound is a lax vowel that is opposed to this sound here, which is pronounced at the back of the throat. Um, so caught in British English without the R, just like in the previous word, as opposed to court in American English. And then we have pull as opposed to pull and bust as opposed to bust, sorry, bust as opposed to burst, or burst, burst, and then, uh, and then this is the schwa, the most common vowel sound in English, which is also the most neutral one, so it sounds like a, uh, and we find it here in Leicester, which is really difficult to spell because it is spelled L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R, uh, but it is pronounced Leicester. And um, the last one is the one that we have in let, okay? So uh, we can see that the opposition between 
lax vowels in black and tense vowels in red is constant or almost constant because uh, this is obviously more tense than the schwa even though it is not really the tension is not really I mean the tension is relative um, so all these are pure vowels and uh, let's now go over diphthongs which are uh, the association of two vowels. So these first diphthongs, the centering diphthongs, uh, they do not exist in American English, only in British English where we have here. In American English that would be here and then um, bear and bear and tour. Well, that's American English. Tour, tour. Um, and then vowels that are cl um, diphthongs, sorry, diphthongs that are closing, as in by or uh, bay or boy or now or low. Low is a tough one. Try to remember the pronunciation of this one. Low. And then triftong, so three vowels that are associated and pronounced one after another, um, as in tire, which has two different spellings uh, in British English and American English, and players, and employer. Ta, rower, um, and we'll have a look at um, websites that can be really helpful in the next video. Actually, I think. Okay, so pure pure vowels, diphthongs, triftongs, and we have already seen all the symbols that are used in the IPA for vowel sounds. Let us now go on and so you remember tense vowels and lax vowels, les voyelles tendues et les voyelles non tendues. That's the main opposition that you need to remember. And then let's go on to consonant sounds, consonant phonemes. So uh, if I compare the sound p as in pill with the sound b as in b, which can also be spelled with double e, um, then what's the difference? Well, if I try to pronounce them uh, and um, if I put my hand in front of my mouth like this or against my throat, then I can feel that the sound is located in different places in my body. And so P and B, I don't know if you want to do it and see where the sound comes from, but maybe you can tell that P is pronounced uh, with the lips here, whereas B is more towards the throat. Therefore, B is going to be called a voiced consonant in consonant sonore uh, because the vocal cords are used when you pronounce b, whereas p is an unvoiced consonant because it doesn't make the vocal cords sound that much. Okay, so just like we had tense and lax vowel phonemes, we have voiced and unvoiced or voiceless consonant phonemes. So let's go over them and you'll see very few of them, actually only four of them, are difficult to memorize but you'll remember them fast. Uh, so um, yes, again be very active and read the transcriptions here. So that is T as in till and D as in do, K as in kill, G as in go, 
which is more open in American English. Go, go. Uh, f as in fat and v uh, as in vito or in American English vito. That's what this symbol here means. And then s as in recipe or sink, you remember we're sinking, on coule, uh, and z as in Thames, and then we have the sound sh as in should, and j as in pleasure, stress on the first syllable here. Uh, so these are the first two difficult symbols that you need to memorize. Sh and j, as in should, and pleasure. And uh, you, uh, you may also remember that any time the letters O-U-L-D are the ending of a word, then it's, the L is always silent. So it's always would, should. Um, the next symbol, yes, so that's ch as in chair and j as in just. So these two are easy if you've remembered already the previous ones. And then that's the third difficult one. That's the Greek letter theta. Um, that we have seen in that video where somebody was thinking and somebody else thought they were thinking. Um, so this is the sound that you make when you put your tongue in between your teeth and uh, pronounce what corresponds to uh, TH in many cases in English as in thin even though th also has another pronunciation that's when you put your tongue behind your upper teeth and you go then okay so um, there are two actually three different ways of pronouncing th in english we'll go over the third one uh, some other time and for now just try and associate this theta symbol here to the tongue in between the teeth and this delta symbol here to the tongue against the upper teeth. So that's thin and then. And in the next video we'll go over uh, websites which can help you assimilate all this data. The last consonant that we need to go over in this series is the one that we have in hedge. So that's the H when it is pronounced and it is very important to distinguish the words in which the H is pronounced from the words in which it is not as an edge here uh, which has zero H. This is actually the linguistic zero. It's not a phonetic symbol, which is why it is in between brackets. Um, okay, so that's it. We've, we've have seen all the voiced and unvoiced consonants. So voiced consonants in red here, unvoiced consonants on the left. And basically, very few of them are difficult to memorize, only sh and zh, and also the th, which can be as in thin or as in then. Uh, let's go on to the other consonants. So, three nasal consonants, m mm, as in mom. N as in kin, and then ing as in king. Okay, so the last one is uh, just as if there was a G, but it's not fully pronounced. It is closing the sound, but really uh, lightly.
Okay, but you can feel the throat is closing. And then the liquid L as in London or in build. So two slightly different L's, one that is clear, the other that is dark. And then the R as in tree or car. Uh, yes, and I should point out here that in British English, the R that's at the end of a word is never pronounced unless you go on to pronounce in a word that starts with a vowel. And uh, so, for instance, you would say the car, and then the car is in the garage. Then you would hear the R. Whereas in American English, you hear it all the time, car. Semi-consonants, so uh, this J here is the symbol for the sound Y, as in Ja in German. So this is yoke, which means in French le jaune d'oeuf. And the last one, the W for the sound W, as in women. And that's it. We have seen all the symbols, the main symbols in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, so as you can see, very few of them are different from the letters we are used to. Make sure you remember that J is the symbol for the sound Y and um, go over them little by little. Um, the one thing you need to pay attention to, I think, is you just need to focus and make sure you pay attention, okay? Uh, and in order to convince you that paying attention is key, I'm going to ask you to do that little quick exercise. So read this sentence and um, and answer the question, how many F's are there in this sentence? Okay, so you can pause the video, but that's a really easy exercise. And what's interesting and surprising is that when you do that exercise with a large number of people, some people find that there are three F's, others four, others five, others six. So it's really interesting to see that even when the question is really simple, not everybody's paying attention enough to really get the right answer. Uh, so make sure you pay attention when you're working with phonetic symbols. That's the conclusion I wanted to highlight with this little exercise. Uh, of course, in this sentence, three of the F's are not pronounced F, are not pronounced F, I should say, rather, because um, this is the word, three times the word of. Okay, so uh, maybe that's also one of the reasons why, but still, the question was how many F's are there? Okay, so six. Um, in the next video, we'll go over the different websites that can be useful for you to work on these symbols. And we'll also um, do a little exercise on phonetic transcriptions. Uh, for this video, I think we're gonna leave it there. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, I thank you for your attention and also congratulations for doing all that work on this video. That's really good. Uh, I'll see you in the next video and in the meantime, I wish you all the best. <laughs>